This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. The link of the original version that is the Tamil video is given in the description box of this video. In the recent video that I published, we saw the effects of the planets in the sign of Aries. A great number of YouTube subscribers have watched the video and the video had a great reception. It is true that the people wants to know the fundamentals of astrology in detail. I publish videos for my paid subscribers regarding the effects of the planets in the first bhava, second bhava and up to 12th bhava to the ascendant. That is the effects of the planets for different ascendants from Aries to Pisces in the natural zodiac. When my YouTube subscribers requested videos from me of same sort without any obligation of paying any nominal fee, I promised to all my YouTube subscribers that I will publish videos for them without expecting any nominal fees. When I published the video as I promised, I'm really surprised to see the number of viewers who watched the video. It was really huge in number, millions of views. I can understand the extent of your expectation from me regarding astrology and appreciation for the video. Now let us see the effects of the planets in Taurus or Rishabha. First of all, let us discuss about the Taurus sign, the characteristics of the sign and let me also enlighten you about the Lord of the sign and then we will see the effects of each planet in the sign of Taurus. You also have to understand the friendly and the enemy relationship between the planets. I am going to discuss about the best position of a planet and advantages and disadvantages of the position of the planets when it is present in a sign. Among the categorization of the signs as mobile signs, fixed signs and dual signs, the Taurus is categorized as fixed sign. The fixed signs are stable, the mobile signs are vibrant and the dual sign is a combination of both stable and vibrant nature. I had mentioned this point already in my last video. Among the three categories of the signs as movable, fixed and dual signs, the Taurus stands as the primary sign among the fixed signs. In Western astrology, these categories are respectively termed as cardinal signs, fixed signs and mutable signs. I would like to add further that among the fixed signs of the natural zodiac, this is the only sign whose lord is benefic. That is, the lord of the Taurus is Venus, which is a natural benefic. I said this point because Jupiter is not the planet lord of any fixed sign in the natural zodiac. This Taurus sign is owned by Venus. Saturn is the lord of the houses of one movable sign and one fixed sign. In the same fashion, Mars is also the lord of two houses, one movable sign and one fixed sign. Following these two planets, the Venus is also the lord of two houses, one fixed sign and one movable sign. The Saturn and Mars are malafix and Venus is the only planet the only natural benefic that owns a fixed sign. The Taurus sign is of a consistent nature or stable nature. The lord of this sign is Venus which is a female and an elegant planet. The planet also represents beauty. So those born in Taurus will be beautiful 
will have an aesthetic sense and the native will not have sentiments at all. The natives of Taurus will have strong and consistent principles. How the Taurus is pictorially represented? It is represented by a bull. What is the role of a bull? It will work hard. It will work for the well-being of others. The bull never toils for the sake of itself. It always works for the well-being of the others. So, those who were born in Taurus would like to toil for his or her family and for those whom they love very much. The natives of Taurus will have respect for hard working. Their motto would be like, do the duty and don't expect benefits in turn. This is the natural thinking of the Taurus sign. Whatever I explain now is the nature of the house of Taurus. Whether the native is born as ascendant or Rashi as Taurus, they will reflect the character to the extent of their Venus strength in their natal chart. The people of Taurus sign will have consistent principles, will be more feminine, elegant and also patient. Because the sign represents the land. The land is personified as the mother. The tendency of the land is to be patient no matter whatever harm is done to it. However, the land delivers benefits to those who hurt it. There is a famous couplet of Tirukkural. It reads in Tamil as follows. Agarvarai thangum nilam pola tammai igarvar poruttal thalai. In English, it means, as earth bears up the men who delve into her breast, to bear with scornful men of virtues is the best. In simple words, the land bears all the pain that is induced by others to it, and in turn, it delivers benefits to the ones who hurt it. This is one of the best virtues in the world. In the same fashion, the Taurus house will bear the harm done by others. This is the nature of the Taurus sign. When the native is of Taurus ascendant and the Venus is also Subhatva, then whatever I said will apply for the ascendant. Therefore, the people of Taurus sign will be stable, will be elegant and they will always tend to work for the well-being of the others. The Taurus sign naturally tends to be patient. The Taurus sign will not be impulsive and they are very stable in their decisions. These are the characteristics of the Taurus sign. Those who were born as ascendants of Taurus and Rashi of Taurus will reflect the above mentioned characters. The ascendants of Taurus will reflect more the true behavior of the Taurus and the Rashi is secondary in reflecting the character of Taurus. A native is a combination of both the characteristics of Ascendant and Rashi. Well, Taurus is a feminine sign and it is an even sign. The sign represents patience as it is a sign of the land. It is a fixed sign. The land represented by Taurus is even without any ridges or grooves so the land is available for use to others. The Taurus sign native is straightforward, will toil for the well-being for the others. The Taurus sign does not have any sentiments at all. They will not have compassion towards anybody whether it is mother, father, brother or sister. When Venus is strong, the native will be honest. There are two and quarter stars that are placed in this sign. There are totally nine padas in each sign. This sign will have second pada, third pada and fourth pada of the star Kritika and the entire Rohini star that is first pada, second pada, third pada and the fourth pada of Rohini and the first pada and second pada of Mrigashirisha.
the torus sign comprises these nine padas of the stars kritika is a star that has leg in the sign of aries and body and head in taurus that is the first pada of kritika is in the sign of aries and the second pada third pada and the fourth pada of kritika is in the sign of taurus therefore the taurus sign consists of the stars kritika rohini and mrigashirisha the sun is exalted in the sign of aries and the moon is exalted in the sign of taurus the sun and the moon are the primary sources of light for the earth these two planets that is the sun and the moon are personified as the father and the mother these two primary sources of the light to the earth gets exalted in the first two subsequent signs of the natural zodiac or kala purusha the primary source of the light which is personified as father is exalted in the first sign that is aries and the moon that is personified as mother gets exalted in the second sign of the natural zodiac that is in the sign of taurus the natural zodiac or the kala purusha chart is personified as human being and more importantly neither as male nor as female the kala purusha is personified as time and aries is the first sign of the kala purusha the signs of the natural zodiac starts from aries and ends at pisces so we can reason why the house of aries is considered to be the first house of the natural zodiac can you try to interpret the logic behind addressing aries as the first house of the natural zodiac that is kala purusha chart since the sun gets exalted in aries it becomes the first house in the natural zodiac father is the first and the mother follows next in the order the moon which is personified as mother gets exalted in the second house of the natural zodiac that is in taurus moon gets exalted in the first 3 degrees in the sign of taurus from 4th degree to 30th degree the moon has the status of mool trikona the pictorial representation of the taurus is bull those who are born in taurus rashi or ascendant will reflect the characteristic of the bull which is patience since the lord of the taurus sign is venus which is a female planet those who are born in this sign will be more feminine and elegant the native will be stable and will be very patient those who are born in the sign of taurus cannot be persuaded easily the native will be very passionate to groom oneself will appear pleasant and fresh please remember that these are the general predictions the native will definitely reflect all the characteristics that i mentioned above whereas the intensity of the explained characteristics is proportional to the strength of the venus in the natal chart to summarize the taurus is a fixed sign female sign and it is the house where moon gets exalted let us see now the effects of each planet in the house of taurus this is the own house of venus the mool trikona house of the venus is libra i will explain now how to identify the own house and mool trikona house of a planet if you observe the natural zodiac you will find the natural benefits such as jupiter venus and mercury will attain mool trikona in the lower part of the natural zodiac and you can also find that the natural malefic will attain the status of mool trikona in the upper half of the natural zodiac this is a way to easily memorize the own house and the mool trikona house of the benefic and the malefic planets usually the beginners get a doubt that among the two houses 
which houses are the planet's own house and which houses are the mul trikona house of a planet there might be some confusion in your mind regarding this this is a simple way to recall the own house and mul trikona house of a planet the benefic planets will attain the status of mul trikona in the lower half of the natural zodiac Sagittarius is the house which is in the lower half of the natural zodiac. This is where Jupiter attains Mool Trikona. Libra sign which is in the lower half of the natural zodiac is the house where Venus attains Mool Trikona. The Aquarius is in the upper half of the natural zodiac and Saturn gets Mool Trikona here. Aries is in the upper half of the natural zodiac. and mars attains the status of mul trikona here once you know this logic definitely you will not have any confusion about the concept of the planets mul trikona and their own house it is so easy to recall the houses in the upper part of the natural zodiac will be their own houses for the natural benefic and will be the mul trikona houses for the natural malefic Please remember this. This is a simple way to remember the concept. Well, have you ever thought about the reason behind this? If you know, write it in the comment section. Anyway, I will teach the logic behind this concept during the online classes in the future. There is a scientific reason behind this. Please try to contemplate about this. and if you find the answer write it in the comment section of this video raise questions in your mind like well guruji says that there exists scientific reasoning behind the concept of own house and mul trikona it seems to be also true what is the reason behind this so raise such sort of questions please try to find the reason behind this logic not only this in astrology if you contemplate about the reasons behind every concept you will definitely find it if you are passionate about astrology and contemplate a concept repeatedly you will definitely understand the logic think over why the lower houses of the natural zodiac is mul trikona for the benefics and the upper houses of the natural zodiac or mul trikona for malefics recently one of my subscriber mentioned in his comment that was very interesting his comment reads as follows in all the chara rashi that is in the movable signs of the natural zodiac the male planets gets exalted and in addition the male neuter gender saturn also gets exalted this is what he had written I couldn't recall his name and that was a wonderful comment it is not true though a planet cannot be both male and neuter the word neuter itself means it is neither male nor feminine i have published videos regarding the neuter characteristic of the planet saturn and mercury i will definitely explain in another video if, if i get opportunity the difference between the exaltation of the rajgrahas in chara rashi that is in movable signs and the exaltation in upaya rashi and other stira rashi that is dual and fixed signs i would like to dedicate this video to explain about taurus so on another occasion i will explain the rajgrahas exaltation or in my subsequent videos I really appreciate the efforts of the subscriber whom I mentioned above but as he mentioned there is no term as male neuter and female neuter the term neuter itself means which is neither masculine nor feminine and it is not a mix of both i believe i have explained the concept already during a public speech and i would have explained in a video that the younger age and the oldest age of the saturn is a state of neuter 
so as you mentioned saturn cannot be addressed as male neuter the neuter gender itself does not belong to any particular category well let us see what would be the effects of each planet in the house of taurus let us discuss about the first planet the sun taurus is the inimical house to the sun yet sun will attain subhatva in this house i will tell you the reason venus treats the sun and the moon as its enemies so this house is the inimical house for the sun yet as per my theory of subhatva and pabhatva sun will attain subhatva in taurus house if the sun that is positioned in this house gets aspected by jupiter sun will gain more subhatva let us imagine sun is in taurus and taurus sign is the ninth or 10th house uh, that is 10th or even near 10th house because sun at 9th or 11th is near dikbala or directional strength rather than sun getting exalted in the house of aries if the sun is in the house of taurus with the connection of venus or jupiter and when it is at the 10th house or near the 10th house for the native it will give benefits of a royal to the native provided there is support of other planets as well in the house of taurus the sun gets subhatva furthermore when the sun is connected with jupiter or venus and thus gets more subhatva the native will definitely enjoy government jobs raj yoga and authoritative jobs in the government so please try to understand the difference between the inimical house and the house where the planet can get subhatva so please don't predict at a superficial level that the planet here the sun is in the inimical house or the planet is debilitated when you understand my theory of subhatva strength sukshma strength and pabhatva strength the predictions will be accurate the highest concept of all the theories in astrology is subhatva sukshma and pabhatva strength having said the above though taurus house is the inimical house for the sun sun gets subhatva here in addition to the subhatva strength gained here if venus is also present in taurus sun gets more subhatva because the sun and the venus are the planets that cannot be far away they are always nearer to each other having said this if venus is in the house of pisces that is venus is exalted and sun at taurus is also aspected by the jupiter greater benefits will be delivered by the sun when sun is positioned in the house of taurus whose lord venus is exalted and sun being aspected by jupiter as well then the native will enjoy authoritative position such as manager general manager ias officer ips officer or sort of highly privileged jobs so when venus is exalted and when sun is in the house of taurus whose lord is exalted then the sun delivers greater benefits so don't let your final prediction as the sun is in its inimical house you have to consider the sthana bala status such as exaltation debilitation friend enemy status etc but finally you have to apply the concept of subhatva for accurate prediction having said this when sun is in the house of taurus that is rishabha it is good when it is at 10th house or near the 10th house it is much better as the sun is 50% malefic when the 50% beneficence level of sun gets more subhatva in the house of taurus definitely it is a good position for the sun i would like to add one more point here i have discussed about the aspect of the sun that is drishti of the surya 
in an online conference of Dindigal in the month of June. I mentioned during the conference that sun has no aspect. One of my students pointed out that I had mentioned that sun has aspect in few of my articles. He even cited those articles. I never say contradictory statements. When you are in a state to understand the concepts of what I say in my videos, you will definitely understand 100% what I convey through my video. Please listen again to what I spoke during the conference of Dindical. I have discussed the aspect of the sun having perceived the strength of the sun as 50% benefic and 50% malafic. I am very well aware that I had mentioned in my videos that sun aspects its own house Leo from Aquarius. You have to analyze under which criteria I mentioned that the sun has aspect or no aspect. So please keep writing your doubts in the comment section. A disciple or Sishya should definitely identify the mistakes of his guru or the teacher. If only a disciple is capable of finding a mistake that a guru makes, the disciple can reach higher level in learning a domain. So, it is good to have an eye where the guru makes a mistake. But your guru is a knowledgeable one. So, watch my videos again and again. When you watch my videos very keenly, with a lot of patience, you will definitely get a feel of the concept. That is, you will definitely grasp a good knowledge of understanding gradually. You will understand the reason or logic behind my statements. So please watch the online video of the Dindical Conference held by the famous astrologer Mr. Chinaraj where I have mentioned the intricacies of the aspect of the sun. I hope you will definitely understand the concepts that I explained. I diverted the topic a little on the sun's aspect. So, let us come back to our topic, the planets in the house of Taurus. Though the house of Taurus is inimical to the sun, the position of the sun in the house of Taurus is good. When it is more subatwa, the sun delivers more benefits. When Taurus house is 10th or near the 10th house, the sun can deliver greater benefits. For the ascendance of Jupiter team, the position of the sun in the house of Taurus with the connection of natural benefits is good. When sun is in connection with the malefic like Saturn, it will not deliver good effects. When sun is Pabatwa, the sun will deliver worse effects. When sun is in connection with the Saturn or Rahu, it will not deliver any benefit. When sun is in the house of Taurus with Pabatua, it will do more adverse effects. The next planet that we are going to discuss is the moon. Moon is exalted in the house of Taurus. Even when it is no moon day, that is Amavasya, the moon is exalted here. There are four occasions where the sun and moon conjunction does not suffer from Amavasya Dosha during the no moon day that is when sun and moon are together. Can you identify the reason behind this? During Amavasya, while sun and moon are together, even if one planet is strong, then there is no Amavasya Dosha. On certain grounds based on the light energy and gravity, the statement is true. This sort of sun and moon conjunction will happen only four times a year. During the month of Chaitra, that is Chittirai in Tamil, that is mid-April to mid-May, sun is exalted in the house of Aries. During the month of Vaisha, that is in Tamil we say Vaigasi, that is mid-May to mid-June, moon is exalted in the house of Taurus. During the month of Adi, that is in Hindi we say Ashad, 
that is mid july to august the moon is in its own house during the month of shravan that is avani that is mid august to mid september sun will be in its own house these four cases are the exceptions to amavasya dosha in these four exceptional cases even though the moon is amavasya the moon will retain its sthana bala do not attain subhatva the sthana bala status is one level low to the subhatva and this will be attained by the moon so the positioning of the moon in the taurus is good as it is either exalted or mool trikon status when the exalted moon is in taurus and especially during the month of kartikeya that is mid november to december that is kartika the most auspicious full moon happens the most auspicious full moon in a year happens when the moon is in the house of taurus and when sun is in the house of scorpio straight opposite to the moon please try to understand all these based on the concepts of light energy you can very well interpret the logic behind my statements that is why i say certain full moons are very auspicious and why during certain months the planets does not have amavasya dosha remember i told moon gets exalted in the nakshatra of kritika that is only in the first 3 degrees and the rest 27 degrees it is mool trikon status cancer is the own house for the moon recently we celebrated the kartikeya devam during the kartika month that is mid november to december we celebrated the kartikeya devam during the full moon in the month of kartikeya or kartika the most auspicious full moon happens when moon is in the house of taurus and when sun is in the house of scorpio so when the moon is in the house of taurus it indicates great significance in addition to this if venus is also strong that is the house lord of the taurus is strong and is also in the same house it is more subhatva there is another case where the moon will bring great benefits when moon is in the house of taurus and when venus is exalted in the house of pisces moon will deliver greater benefits when moon is in the house of taurus and venus is in the house of cancer that is when there is parivartan or mutual exchange of houses by the house lords moon will deliver greater benefits these are the concepts that you have to know to predict the effects of the moon that is positioned in taurus i already said when sun is in the house of aries and near the 10th house for their ascendant then the native will get authoritative jobs in the government the professions that are related to the sun or the government jobs managerial positions leading positions fields related to the authoritative power and electricity the strength of the sun in a natal chart also indicates social status of the ancestors like grandfather great grandfather and the status of the father properties inherited through paternal ancestors based on the subhatva of the sun and the leo house the native will enjoy a leading position in the domain wherever he works when there is more subhatva the native will be ahead for 1000 people or 10000 people these are the benefits when sun is in the house of taurus in the similar fashion when moon is in good status the mother of the native will be good all those natives who were taurus ascendant in whose chart moon is in the taurus they will be very affectionate towards their mother the native will be so passionate towards their mother to such an extent their eyes will be welled up with tears when they speak about their mother the native's heart will melt when they speak about their mother 
they always speak great about their mothers they will be very proud of their mothers upbringing and their mothers hard work behind their upbringing etc when i went to the conference in coimbatore i happened to discuss about the personality of taurus ascendant or taurus rashi post discussion about the natives of taurus ascendants i requested the people among the crowd only those who were natives of taurus ascendants some 6 to 7 people stood up and when i asked one of them whether she is taurus ascendant and she is fond of her mother she started crying it was a proof like to which extent the taurus ascendant natives or passionate about their mothers she told me her mother had great challenges and worked very hard in bringing her up if the heart of a person melts just by hearing the word mother they will be definitely natives of taurus ascendants or rashi there was one more taurus native ascendant who stood among the crowd mention that he is also rishabha rashi but he never likes his mother this happened in the coimbatore conference at maharshi mandar chalam i asked him instantaneously whether in his natal chart moon is in conjunction with rahu in the house of taurus he agreed to that point the vedic astrology never fails The art of astrology lies in understanding when the planet attains subhatva those who are born with moon in taurus will be strong minded this is one of the greatest benefits of the moon in taurus usually the people of taurus rashi that is moon in taurus are strong minded through all walks of life whether it is good or bad they don't change their decision When moon is highly subhatva in the house of Taurus the natal will have a very good mother when this house becomes the 10th house for the natal and moon is the highest subhatva planet in the natal chart then the natal will have professions related to the products of liquid milk products related to milk etc when saturn is also subhatva in the same house then the profession would even be cattle farming poultry professions related to white colored products vegetables fruits juices agriculture aquatic beings and organisms ocean fisherman marine life etc the next planet that we are going to discuss is mars this is the house of taurus and the house lord venus is natural benefic where all the planets will attain subhatva here needless to say mars will attain subhatva in the house of taurus the karaka or significance of the mars such as anger will be subdued in the house of taurus when mars is in the house of taurus it gets subhatva this is indeed inimical house for mars but this is the house of subhatva please understand what i explain please don't confuse with the concepts such as mars is enemy to venus and venus is enemy to mars taurus is the enemical house to the mars as the original dictum says if you follow such rules and concepts the prediction will not be accurate this is the house of a natural benefic the effects of the mars and other planets in the house of taurus will depend on the status of the house lord venus in general if you want to predict the effect of a planet in a particular house you have to definitely check the status of the house lord in whose house the planet resides i have reiterated this point many times the house lord must be strong to help the planet residing in its house to deliver its effects I have already given many real time examples for this. Let me tell you one example now. Imagine that you are in a rental house that is your a tenant. You are in a rental house whose house owner is poor. Or imagine the house owner relies only on your rent for his income. 
Imagine that you have made a crime or mistake and the police is in search of you. In this case, the police will not hesitate to mishandle you while taking you to the police custody. But imagine another case where you are a tenant of the house whose owner is Emily or a person who is of very high social status. You are a tenant of a house which belongs to a person with high social status and rich men. In this case, you are tenant of an authoritative person or a person of high status. Even if you just stay as a tenant of such a powerful house owner, the police will treat you in a dignified way. So, there is a dignity for even the house where you reside. Though you are a tenant, you have gained some respect since your house owner is an authoritative person with good social status. Having said this, while you are predicting the effect of the planet in any house from Aries to Pisces in the natural zodiac, you have to assess the strength of the house lord. So in case if the lord of the Taurus sign Venus is debilitated, then all the planets residing in the house of Taurus are weakened. In contrast to the above, if Venus is exalted, then the planets residing in the house of Taurus gains more Subhatva. The house of Taurus is the house of a benefic. Whether the planet residing in the house of Taurus is enemy or neutral to the house or any other Sthanabala status, it is still the house of a benefic. Never forget the fundamental concept that the Taurus is the house of a benefic. The planets residing in the house of Taurus will get Subhatva. The level of Subhatva of the planet residing in the house of Taurus is proportional to the strength of the Venus. Furthermore, Subhatva can be attained by the conjunction of a benefic or the aspect of a benefic. When Mars is in the house of Taurus, don't predict that Mars is inimical to the house. Mars here in the house of Taurus will do some benefits. When Mars has connection with Jupiter, either conjunct or aspect, it will deliver benefits. When Venus is in the house of Taurus itself with Mars, it is called as Brigu Mangala Yoga. Therefore, when Mars is aspected by Jupiter or in conjunction with Jupiter or Venus, Mars gets more Subhatva. Moreover, when Mars is in the house of Taurus, it aspects its own house that is Scorpio and consequently the house of Scorpio also gets Subhatva. If the native is Scorpio ascendant, then when Mars aspects its own house from the seventh house to the ascendant, it is beneficial as Mars aspects from the house of a benefic. In addition to this, if the house lord of the Taurus, that is Venus, is exalted, then Mars is strengthened. However, the Scorpio native will be an angry person. The karaka or significance of the Mars, such as anger, activeness, braveness, will be definitely reflected by the native of the Scorpio ascendant, but the house gets Subhatva as well. So Mars in the house of Taurus will deliver its good effects. When Mars is positioned in the house of Taurus, it aspects his own house Scorpio, which is the eighth house in the natural zodiac. Consequently, the house effect of the Scorpio, such as secrecy, insurance, marketing profession, profession related to communication, and even earning by smartly cheating the people, all these will be delivered by the Mars aspect from the house of Taurus. Mars is Subhatva in Taurus, therefore it will deliver benefits provided there is no connection with the Malafic such as Saturn or Rahu. The next part of the video will cover the effects of other planets in the house of Taurus. Thank you. The link of the website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of the Google app is also given in the description box that is available only for Android users. 
The app's name is Aditya Guruji. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box.